All right, video time. Uh, this is probably the my favorite battery that I've designed so far. This is a 52 volt, 10 amp hour e-bike battery. Um, as you know, I've been getting into uh, designing batteries. Here are some other ones that I've designed that are from different cells and different things. On this one, I started with the small one here, 24 volt, just to see how I can get the dimensions. And then it went into that. I made a couple mistakes here and then a couple mistakes there. Those are the different iterations. But then finally, we're here. This one has everything on the right place. Um, yeah, all the dimensions are correctly and went perfectly. So now this, this is probably the final one here. I'm gonna order all these parts. And then, oh, the only thing there's left is to test it. So what I'm doing here is I'm charging it. Here's a three amp charger, 58.8 volts, right? And that's what a 14S battery would need. And it's going through the BMS here. I wanna see if it will uh, balance the cells, but these are brand new cells, so they're perfectly balanced to begin with. Uh, but I'm just testing it, right? And then eventually I'm gonna load it up here. The BMS that I chose for this one is a 45 amp BMS continuous it'll do up to a 90 amp max burst right so this battery is perfect for an e-bike uh what's uh, 45 amps times 52 isn't like that's like two kilowatt and then 90 is like four kilowatts so this might be able to be uh used for a very high performance e-bike I mean, I don't know, high performance, maybe mid performance. I don't know. I don't know where the levels are on e-bikes. I think high performance goes into like five kilowatt or something like that. Some crazy amount. That's ridiculous power when it comes to a, a bike level, right? But another thing that I'm doing here is that it fits in a bag like this. In fact, this bag is a bit too big, which allows you to then also put the uh, controller here, everything in the one single thing, and then just cables would come out and then go into your thing. But this, uh, I've ordered smaller ones in here that I might fit in here. Uh, just the battery, in case you're just adding it to uh, an e-bike that already has the controller and all those other electronics somewhere else, right? But these are, you know, just the experiments that I'm doing. Um, stay tuned for the final video where i'm showing you how to put this whole together this will be an open source project like all my projects you will be able to download the files to print your own boards and then put this battery together yourself using any uh 21 700 cells right these are very very popular these are the latest that are on all the new cars on all the the, the teslas the model 3s have these uh, and the Rivians, those one cars that I'm uh, driving around and getting, these have the 2170s. And so these are going to be pretty cool. This is uh, very small and very light for being a one kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, I think this is uh, good for like 25 miles, 30 miles or something, or something like that. Um, depending on the e-bike, of course, right? But stay tuned for that. It's coming up once I finally do the testing oh yeah it even has the thermistor here for temperature all i'm missing is the little white uh glue that will allow me to glue this little guy in here so that it transfers the heat from the cells into this uh, sensor so then the bms knows to either to cut off if it's the cells are too hot uh and probably yeah probably this is probably heat i don't know if it's for cold but we'll test it we'll see how that goes now time to test this battery here it is it's connected in there and it's going through this this is just a meter so that uh it's got the uh, capacity and it tells you the voltage and and then tells you how much current is going through there then that connects into two grid tight inverters i'm gonna try one first but i think the total that this does is like 20 amps so i think both of these will load this battery for with about 40 Five, 43 amps i think at the beginning and then it's gonna gradually get into like higher closer to 50 amps right so it's a 45 amp uh 45 amp bms we'll see how it does under this load we'll measure everything including the capacity and then uh the thermal camera will check to see if there are any problems with the design of the battery you know if anything is getting hot and stuff these are all 
welded with a single weld. I want to see if maybe we need to do a second weld on there to be able to carry more uh, current, right? Uh, or maybe just increase the power on the welder. Uh, we'll see. This is around 30. I think it, no, it's 25, I think, whatever the setting on the thing is. So if we, we'll do another test. We'll test this one. If it gets too hot or it's got hot spots or whatever, then we'll do another one and we'll increase the power. We'll test that one and then, uh, then we'll take it from there. Let's test it. We have just started the test. We connected the inverter. There it is. watts 21 amps battery is being loaded with 21 amps all right there we go ninety eight percent so we've taken two percent of the battery uh, there's a hot spot here Oh, but it's just that connector. This connector might turn out to be a... I might have to make a better cable if that's the case, but let's move that out of the way there. Yeah, this is my hand. So this is still all very cold. It's just, you know, 25C is... Uh... So now we've connected the second one. Now it's 1800 watts. Oh, 2.2 kilowatt according to this. But then this one doesn't match that. Anyways, 43 amps, 44 amps. Uh, let's see how this camera, let's see how this thing is gonna do. It's still pretty uh, cold. It's not warming up. Okay, now we're starting to see some warming up there on the sides. BMS is really hot. A hundred. Oh my god. Okay. That's a hundred degrees right there. It can't be good for that BMS. And I'm only pulling 43 amps, so I'm within spec of uh, that BMS. It's a 45 amp BMS and I'm pulling 43 amps. I was pulling a little bit more for a little bit, for a few, for a minute or two here, and then I had to reset my things to, to higher, but it is still rising. As the voltage lowers, diminishes, then the uh, amperage keeps going up. Uh, but it's still pulling 1.9 kilowatts, so this is continuous though. So, continuous. It's going to get that hot in there. And that's the MOSFETs. Yeah, if we point out... Let's see here. Let's see, can we... Ooh, I mean, that's really hot too. That's... Okay, so my bus bars are... On what? Yeah, it's in the 70s. That's kind of hot, but... But man, that BMS is, that's hot. It's really hot. So this is what will happen when you run this battery at 100%. Maybe I need to rate this at 40 amps. 
instead of uh, 45 amps. So we're trusting that BMS right now that it's gonna cut power when the voltage of the cells goes down. 127, okay, that's way too hot. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna disconnect this. Okay, I just terminated this test because that's 130 degrees and I can see a little bit of smoke. That BMS is, um, well, it's not gonna survive this test. We were at 5.4 amp hours left, 26 left. Uh, 48 volts right it was around 43 volts when I terminated this test uh, but that was already starting to smoke and in fact this thing might still go off I might just have to throw this battery outside <laughs> just to make sure <laughs> yeah so this BMS uh, does not impress unfortunately so i think my batteries my bus bars are okay i might have to just beef up a little bit um the uh the nickel strip here so that it doesn't heat up as much but i didn't see any hot spots in the actual cells you see that's all pretty even All right, so final result, I don't know. What do you guys say? Did this survive? Is this good design? That's probably not a good BMS, but uh, they're kind of, it's hard to find good BMSs that are that size and stuff. So maybe we just have to do rate this battery.